In this video, we're going to complete the square for the purpose of changing the formula from standard form to vertex form. There are two reasons you could complete the square. The reason that we're going to look at today, which is converting forms of the parabola from one to the other, so from standard to vertex. The other reason we would do it is to change the form of the quadratic from standard into a modified vertex form where we can easily isolate x and solve for the two roots. Creating vertex form means you complete the square and create a perfect square trinomial in the process. So completing the square means you take the value of b and you half it. So 6 divided by 2 and then you square it to get to the final number, which is 3 squared, which is 9. So the value that completes the square in this expression would be 9. And when you factor it, it would be x plus 3, x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. In the second example, it's negative, but it doesn't change the process. So take b divided by 2, and you will get negative 7, don't forget to square it, which becomes positive 49. In a perfect square trinomial, the outer two terms are perfect squares. To factor it, it's the middle term divided by 2. So the last example in the top row, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. To factor it, take the middle term with its sign, divided by 2, and square. The values are not even all the time, so in my second row here, I've got odd numbers. So negative 5 divided by 2, all squared, is going to turn into positive 25 over 4. When you factor, you take the second value with its sign and divide it by 2. Same thing with this last example. The last value is 9 over 2 squared, which is 81 over 4. To factor it, it's x Take the second term following its sign, divided by 2, all squared. Three examples of completing the square, three different styles. In the first example, a equals 1. So now let's do the whole process. So we're changing the way this looks, and we're going from standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and we're turning it into vertex form, which is a, x minus h, all squared, plus k. We're not changing the value of anything. We're just changing the way it looks. So the process is to complete the square. The first step is to create a situation where you have x squared plus bx. In this case, we have that. There's our x squared plus bx. In this case, a has to equal 1. The next process is to complete the square. This value of 8 is not the value that will complete the square, so we need to manufacture one. A lot of things in math will change the way something looks, but not change its value. So half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to add 9. That is a perfect square trinomial. I'm adding 9, and then immediately I'm going to take it away, and I'm going to bring down my 8. So now if you look at my second line, my second equation, it's no different than the one above. I simply added 9 and took it away, which means I'm adding 0, so I'm not changing the value, but it does look different. Which brings us now to our third step. Group the perfect square trinomial. So I created that perfect square trinomial by halving 6 and squaring it. 
plus nine and then taking away. But in a perfect square trinomial now, I can factor that out and it's gonna be x plus three all squared. So now I've looked after these three terms in that equation and I've made it equivalent in my third line. But what I haven't done is looked after the last two values. So negative nine plus eight would become negative one. And now I have vertex form. These two equations are exactly the same value, but they look different. In the second example, my A is not one, it's three. But the process is to make it look like x squared plus bx. So I'm gonna common factor to the point where I get what I want, which is x squared plus bx. The common factor of 3x squared minus 12x is actually 3x, but we don't need to take all of it out. We just need to create the situation where it is x squared plus bx, because that will allow us to complete the square. Now I'm gonna bring down my 11. And now the process is the same. I'm gonna complete the square from the bracket. So there's probably one or two more steps here. x squared minus 4x. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add it, take it away, and then plus 11. So again, I haven't changed the value of the equation in the third step from the second or from the first, but it now does look different. So now my next step is to group the perfect square trinomial. There it is. And then factor. So factoring it becomes x, take the second term, half it, follow the sign, square. I need to simplify, but what I haven't done yet is I haven't looked after the four that's inside the bracket. And I need to. So to do that, to make it sure that it's the same value, I need to take that 3 and multiply through by the negative 4. So now I've got negative 12 and bring down the 11 from above. Now I have to simplify. So y equals 3, x minus 2 all squared minus 1. This last value won't always be negative 1. And I'll prove that to you in the next example. So here we go. Here, a is negative. The first thing I want to do is put it in the correct order. So it's negative 3x squared plus 6x. I need to create an x squared plus bx. So I factor out the negative 3. And I'll get x squared minus 2x. So now my format is the same as the others. Now I'm going to complete the square. So y equals negative 3. x squared minus 2x. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add it and take it away. Add 1 minus 1. And now I'm going to group the perfect square trinomial. There it is. Factor. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Square it. Make sure I multiply my last term. And success. So that is how you move from standard form to vertex form using a process called completing the square. Thanks for watching.